So how y'all doing today? Everybody good? Man, last fucking talk of the day. Damn. Hey everybody, I'm Kevin. Hi, or something like that, right? Hi Kevin, yeah. So before I get started, there's a couple things I need to warn you about. If you've heard me speak before, well, you wouldn't be in the room, but if you suffer through a second talk by me, you'll have heard this before. If you, this first time you've heard me speak, I'll apologize in advance. Couple things. One, I may or may not curse too much. I know, just recently, I had somebody say that I spoke fluent trucker with a sailor accent. And I'm like, I'm stealing that. I know. <laughs> I was doing a talk and I mentioned that I cursed too much and a guy counted. When I finished the talk, I got an email and all the, the subject line of the email was, fuck. <laughs> and the body said, total count, 83. And <laughs> I, I saw the guy later and I'm like, I, you made that up, right? And he's like, no. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try not to, but <laughs> deal. Uh, so this talk will be PG-13. Um, second, I have a sense of humor. I want to point out that many of you just heard me say I have a good sense of humor, and that is not what I said. What I said was I have a sense of humor. I'll give you an example. Do you know why Walmart wasn't hacked? They're not a target. I actually got to introduce the CISO of Walmart at an event, and I told that joke, and he wouldn't shake my hand. <laughs> it was really bad. You know, like, you're like, and now, that dude, and he walks on stage, and I do this, and he goes, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, you got the good side of the joke, right? Like, oh. I was then at another event and the CIO or something of Target was gonna be there and I went to the event organizer. I'm like, hey, do you need a, like a, an MC to announce the keynote? And Adrian, who was running, it's like, yeah, yeah, no problem, you wanna do it? I'm like, yeah, I'd love to do it. She goes, okay. And then she stopped and she went, wait a minute. You never volunteer for anything. Are you gonna tell that joke? I'm like, of course I'm gonna tell that joke. She wouldn't let me MC the thing. The third thing is, I'm full of tangents. I will do my damnedest to make the tangents relevant, but no promises. I'll say that I'm full of lots of things and my eyes are brown. So, today, we're gonna talk about Orion's Quest, okay? This is, I, to me, this is an important talk, but of course, I'm biased, I'm on stage with the microphone, and so, you know, I think all of my talks are important, well, not all of them. But I think this is an important talk because one of the things I've, I've noticed over the years, because I'm old, um, one of the things I've noticed over the years is that very often people don't understand what pen testers or hackers do. And, and I'll talk about it in a second when I do my official bio intro slide crud, right? I'm a pen tester. I've been a pen tester for too damn long, right? I've been in IT for, since 1991 professionally, and I've been a, a penetration tester or some form of cybersecurity person for almost 20 years. And what I've seen a lot of is, I, I hear it called gatekeeping, right? This idea that I'm going to know how to do something and it's my secret sauce, right? And I, I can't let you know, right? Like, like a Big Mac dressing which we all know is Thousand Island with a little bit more ketchup, right? Like that's it. But it's the secret sauce. And I actually, you know, we have a booth because uh, we're a vendor, some crap like that. By the way, if you guys want to mess with vendors, this is the best way to do it. Go out to the vendor area, walk up to the booths, except the Secure Ideas one, start asking questions, but make up an acronym. And just like, 
like, hey man, I was uh, worried about that RxZ uh, vulnerability that was announced. Did you guys see that RxZ? Oh yeah, I totally saw the RxZ vulnerability. It's a bad one, man. Did you get the patches for it? No, I haven't gotten the patches for it. Man, I don't think they've been released before, that RxZ thing. And then just see how long it takes for the vendor to either start talking about the RxZ thing or for the vendor to go, look, I may be an idiot, but I don't fucking know what that is. <laughs> really, like, I don't know. What they might do, because this is the consultant answer, right? Hey, man, I just want to verify. What do you mean by RxZ? Because you know, <laughs> acronyms, that's the consultant answer. That is the way to say, I don't fucking know what it is, but I don't want to admit that, because I bill 325 an hour. But, <laughs> right, like that's what you gotta do. So just walk out to the vendor area and start making up acronyms. Because we have so many fucking acronyms in this industry. We have acronyms for acronyms, right? The TLA, three letter acronym. Yara. I'm sorry? Yara. Oh God, <laughs> we're not even getting into that. Okay, so, who am I? I'm Kevin. I've been Kevin for uh, 51 years. I've been Kevin Johnson for 18 less than that. Um, changed my name the day I turned 18, that was fun. Uh, $212, paperwork to a judge. Are you a felon? Well, I would think you would know that, sir. Are you trying to hide from the law? Would I tell you that? Like, this is just stupid questions. Uh, I am the founder of Secure Ideas. We are a consulting firm. Uh, some people refer to consulting firms like ours as boutique consulting firms, but I always make that feel like I make flower arrangements, and we don't. Um, it's one of those things. We are a pen testing company. Almost exclusively pen testing. Every single service we offer is somehow related to hacking shit in fun ways, right? That's what we get to do. We also do training on it. We teach people how to do it, which goes back to that secret sauce thing, right? Earlier today, as I'm sitting at the booth, this, uh, these three guys walk up, they're talking to us, we're having this conversation. We start talking about this idea that we do called ride-along pen testing. And, and we call it that because I watched too many episodes of Cops when I was a kid. But um, and, and what we do, and this is not a sales pitch, because every pen test company should do this. Whoever you are using for your pen test, ask them for this. It should not cost anything extra, okay? Say to them, hey, well, you're doing the pen test. I'd like to ride along. I'd like to be part of the pen test. I would like to sit with you and see how you do it, right? Because the idea here is, when I finish my pen test, I'm gonna leave. I have the best job in the world. I get to come in, tell you your baby is ugly, and go home. And we know that all babies are ugly. It's right, their skulls aren't connected, they don't have fucking kneecaps, they're squishy people. And I had two kids. I have two kids, I guess is how I should say that, they're not dead, but, a little morbid. <laughs> Told you, tangents, <laughs> right? And it's the person who was talking to us, one of the, the three people that were talking to us, said, what? you're gonna like give us the secret sauce. And I said to him, and there is no such thing as secret sauce. If you're talking to a penetration tester and you ask them how they did something and they tell you, I can't tell you or I have to kill you, punch them in the throat, set them on fire, right? Because that's not the way it should be. We all, should be sharing what we do, how we do, why we do, right, period. And what I have found in years of doing this is every single time I meet somebody and they say, I've got a cool hat, but I can't tell you about it, that means they don't know shit. They read it on some website or mailing list and now they're, they're pretending it's theirs. Right? It's like this one guy, I was at an InfraGuard meeting years ago, and this guy did a talk at the InfraGuard meeting right after DEF CON. And all the guy did was tell you about the talks that he saw. That's it. And it was like, you know those are recorded, right? Like I could go see them, <laughs> watch them. I don't need you to tell me. This is like vacation photos, right? I'm gonna show my age here. You ever go to somebody's house, they do a slide deck of their vacation, and I don't mean PowerPoint, I mean like that little spinny thing with the film in it, you know what I mean? And they're like, look at my vacation. I'm like, fuck you, man, you didn't invite me. But, <laughs> so I'm a pen tester. And so what we're gonna talk about today is how we do things. We're gonna talk about, basically it's story time with Kevin, right? 
So who am I? I told you I'm the founder of Secure Ideas. I'm an OWASP board member. I'm an IONS faculty. I am an open source fanatic. We do lots of it. I speak and teach all over the place, right? I also build Star Wars costumes. I have, well, there's the Gamorrean behind me. Um, now behind me is a life-size Chewbacca that's completely wearable. Uh, I'm seven foot five when I'm in the Chewbacca costume. And let me tell you, it's worth every penny and every bit of effort when you get to walk into a child's hospital room and see them and their family light up. Because Chewie is there, right? Do it. There's a garrison here. Connect with them, help them out. You don't need to build the costumes, you can just help them. Because when we put those costumes on, we can't see. <laughs> And you do not want a seven foot five Chewbacca walking down a hallway alone. <laughs> so this is the agenda for today. There's not many slides. I don't like slides, right? So Orion's quest. Orion was a hunter, right? And we say like immortalized in the stars, right? People were looking up in the sky and they had to map out constellations. I'm glad that happened millions of years ago, or 20, one of the two, somewhere in the middle, right? But I'm glad it did, because we'd have like cell phones there now, right? That constellation's sus. That's a word I heard from my kids. <laughs> so, the idea of constellations was to help us navigate. And that struck me, right? One, because I can't do it. I can't navigate with a GPS. I am lost at all times. I will tell you that when I get off stage at the end of my talk and I go to walk out there, I won't be able to find the vendor area, okay? That is how bad my sense of direction is. It's awful. But as a penetration tester, we are supposed to help organizations navigate, right? This is actually one of the things that pen testers and organizations that sell pen tests often forget. We talk about pen testing, about the exploits we've done, right? I'm gonna pick on DEF CON here, but it's really not picking on DEF CON. But you know, there's never a talk at, that I've ever seen at DEF CON that somebody stands up on stage and says, man, I did this pen test, and I built the best asset list I've ever built during this test. And for the next hour, I'm gonna walk through all of the IP addresses and host names I discovered. <laughs> Nobody does that. Nobody stands up on stage and says, I gotta talk, I gotta talk, I gotta talk. Here's what I'm gonna talk about. How to type your report. Oxford fucking comma. <laughs> Two spaces after periods. I know it makes me look old, but fuck you, right? This isn't a talk at Black Hat, right? What we talk about is, man, I popped that box, I stole $25 million, I did this, I did that, it's fucking awesome. And that's what we think, I have people walk up to the booth, I have people call me, I have people talk to me. I'm in college, I'm in high school, I'm in elementary school and I'd like to be a pen tester. The last one was a real example, it was the guy's dad. My kid is so good at computers. And we get this a lot of times, right? So I meet somebody and they're like, oh, my kid's great at computers, could you give me some advice, everything else like that? I'm like, oh, really? Wait, like, is he in college, is he in high school? It's like, no, he's in second grade, fuck you. <laughs> like, advice, watch out. But we hear these people, they're like, hey, I'm just getting out of college and I wanna be a pen tester. Why do you wanna be a pen tester? Oh man, I wanna hack shit. Do you understand that's the smallest part of my job? That's the thing we lose sight of, is the thing that we're supposed to be doing is helping organizations navigate risk. I can't pen test you to secure. When I finish the pen test, and I find all the cool lead hacks, I do all the lateral movement, I steal all the things, what is it, all your base belong to us or something like that, right? When I finish that pen test, you are as vulnerable to attacks as you were at the beginning of the test, unless I screwed something up bad and you're in a worse shop, which is possible. Did this one pen test, first day we're poking, it was an app test, poking at the application, mapping the application, we find a whole bunch of web shells inside the application. So we stopped the test, because this was not a web shell application. 
Like, hey, you have indicators of compromise. How do you know? Because I can run commands and I didn't upload that shit. <laughs> we start talking to them and it turns out they had had a pen test done by this other company, Optif. No, wait, I'm sorry, another company that will remain nameless. And the organization, whatever reason, and I can pick on a specific organization, but in my opinion, this is a person that did this. They fucked up and they didn't clean up after themselves. They didn't tell the customer how to clean up after themselves, right? Our job is to help navigate risk. That cool lead hacks isn't what we're there for. Our job is to be able to tell them, look, here's the problems you've got. And unless you're that mythical company that has an unlimited budget and just enough resources, here's where, yeah, I see you laughing. <laughs> Let me be clear, I am still looking for that company with an unlimited budget, and if I find it, I'll share. <laughs> When we do our tests, our job, the goal is to be able to show them what the risks are and help them understand why they should fix that and why they should fix that and why that's okay. And part of the problem here is humans are shitty at risk assessments. And InfoSec, I've talked about this in other talks, InfoSec is worse. We say it all the time, right? <sighs> Man, if we get hacked, we're screwed. Are you a public company? Because if you're a public company, you want to be breached. Every public company that I'm aware of that has announced a breach, their stock price is higher after the breach than it was before the breach. Yep, there's a slight dip for like a week or two, and then it goes up above where it was before. So what you all do as InfoSec people, the minute you hear about a breach, short that fucking stock. <laughs> right? Investment advice by Kevin. And I don't even know if shorting the stock is the right term because I don't fucking know. I didn't even buy GameStop, okay? But we're supposed to help them evaluate risk. And if we're like, here's my favorite, right? How many people here believe that we should, every October, tell people as much as possible not to click links? How many people here believe that we'll actually make the world safer if we convince people to stop clicking links, right? We know that like 400% of breaches are caused because somebody clicked the link. My math might be off. We do required training on an annual basis to tell people not to click links. How do we deliver that required training? We send them an email with a link to the training. Here's something you can take away from this talk to save yourself money. Every compliance requirement I know of for compliance training would be met by doing this. Build a web page, put it on a web server, send a link to that web page to every staff member in the company. When they get the email and they click the link, it will go to a page that in very large text, it just says, don't click that. That meets all compliance requirements for security awareness training. Done. Now you don't have to pay no before. They're ridiculous prices. But, we need to tell people what actual risk is. And to do that, we have to actually understand the attacks. And that's why I say that what we should do is tell us how we did the attack, why it's bad. When I finish a pen test, my report has the findings, the recommendations. It has the executive summary where we say all the cool shit and put the graph in there with the pie chart of the fucking flaws, high, medium, whatever. See how much I like my report? And we have a narrative. And in the narrative, we tell you the story of the test. And every pen test should have a narrative. Because the reality is, when I finish my pen test, if I don't have a narrative, I have 37 findings. Some of them high, some medium, some low. Some are, oh my God, just kill yourself. That's an official rating according to NIST. <laughs> Maybe not. But if that's all you see, you can't actually evaluate risk. Why is it a high risk rating? Well, Kevin says it is. Who died and made me God? What wet dame threw a sword at me? I know I misquoted that deal, right? <laughs> the reality is we have to explain the risk. And so in the narrative, we talk about why we tested that, what we did with it, what succeeded and what failed. 
I was testing this system, I found this service, I thought it was this, I tried to exploit it, I wasn't able to exploit it because of this control, that's good. Because now I'm giving them information that helps the organization evaluate what the results are. Because the reality is our job as InfoSec is to help businesses business. I don't know if that's a real verb, but let's go with it, right? Because no company, including my own, is in business to be secure. Yeah, I know the company's name is Secure Ideas. It's plural, because I had more than one. Which is good, because if I only had one idea, that would suck. But we're not in business to be secure. We're not. Being securer, because notice I will not say, I'm not Oracle, we're fucking unbreakable. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We want to be more secure than the average bear, but we're not in business to be secure. And looking at some security companies out there, <laughs> they forgot they were supposed to be secure, right? So we need to look at this. We need to evaluate things. So let's talk about some of the examples, right? Web apps. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of the things people know me about. Ooh. What I found out is, as you walk across this stage, the podium shakes, and if you have a full bottle of water with no cap on it, it splashes. Some advice if you're ever up here. <laughs> we see applications all the time, more and more. When I got started in pen testing, hell, when I was an IT person that helped with the pen tests we were getting, right, the focus was on the network. Oh, you have a DRAC, <laughs> you have an ILO board, right? Root, Calvin, I know, that's DRAC, not ILO, but go with it, right? It's a Dell iDRAC, is, the DRAC from Dell is root, the username, Calvin's the password. You know why it's Calvin? Story is it's the guy who developed its cat. I don't know if that's true, but I wanna believe it is, <laughs> right? And that's exactly the type of, you know, think about your passwords, right? How many people here have a password named after one of their pets? I'm assuming it's more complex than that. You like change the A's out for fours or some bullshit like that, right? I'm sorry? Exclamation point. No, no, don't use an exclamation point, man. Use a question mark. That way when they throw it in a Cain and Abel, it's got the question marks there. They don't like, just one of your passwords should have eight question marks in a row to fuck with Cain and Abel. Yes, I'm that old. We're talking Cain and Abel. <laughs> so... <coughs> We're doing network tests, right? And that's what we focused on. But nowadays, we have organizations, we talk to them, and they're like, we need a pen test. Okay, what do you need pen test? Because with us, we don't just go, okay, cool, let's check a fucking box. We say, why do you want this pen test? Which you should say too, right? What's your goal? Compliance, okay, go fucking talk to somebody else. <laughs> no, we'll do compliance checks, but we're gonna do them better. Um, what we want to hear is you want to fix stuff. And so we talk to these companies and we'll say, okay, what are you testing? Okay, well, like, do you need to do an internal and external and web app and this? Oh, no, we don't have an internal network. We hear that all the time. What do you mean you don't have an internal network? Well, we have nobody in the office anymore. They're all at their house. And they VPN into Azure. Right? Okay. Very common. I, I've got a customer that every single app they run is hosted by somebody else. Managed by somebody else, developed by somebody else, built by somebody else, they pay for it. They are a SaaS IT shop, right? And so they say to us, we need a pen test, okay, because they have a compliance requirement to have a pen test, right? And so we look at the apps. More and more nowadays, which is good, people who build apps to sell, rent, whatever, right? They're required to have those tests tested. They're, even if it's not by a third party, it's by themselves. And so what we see all the time is that we, the people build these apps, and sadly, a lot of security testing, and this is getting better, but a lot of security testing is so focused on network stuff or focused on the coolest new thing, right? Well, you know, uh, last year we were hacking crypto, and this year we're hacking AI. Um, VC money just fell into my hotel room because I said those two words together. Um, you guys know the difference between machine learning and AI, right? Machine learning is written in Python, AI is written in PowerPoint. But, um, <laughs> you fucking know I'm right. <laughs> and 
So we look at these apps. The first app I'll talk about is a membership application. We had this company, they came to us, they were a membership organization, right? We'll call them ISC squared. They're not ISC squared, that's a joke. I just like saying ISC squared because they changed their name to ISC2, which seems like it's a sequel, but they dropped the letter. I don't know, it's weird. That, that's gotta be a weird meeting, right? Like, hey, I think we should change our name. What should we change it to? Let's take that two that's small and up high and just make it bigger, the same size as the other fonts. I'm assuming that's how it was presented. <laughs> I could be wrong, right? But it's a membership organization, right? And they come to us and they're like, hey, we have this app and we need you to test it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Have you tested it? And they're like, no, we don't know how. Well, you, you, fig you picked one of the ways to test it. Hire Kevin. Um, I like that way. <laughs> Greedy capitalist. I just staff, they require a paycheck every two weeks. It's so unreasonable. <laughs> But there's another way, they could have tested it themselves. So what do we do? We start mapping the application, we start looking at what it does, and their biggest worry, because like I said, we ask, why are you having this test done? And this membership organization said, well, we're worried about our data. Okay, what is your most critical piece of data? What is the data that if it got stolen, we keep you up at night? And they said, well, we have members, and when a member comes in to join, they have to give us a lot of really serious personal information. They have to give us a copy of their driver's license. They have to give us a copy of this licensing for the member, like the, the type of job. I'm trying to be vague, I'm sorry, but right? That's one of the things I hate about our industry, NDAs. Um, that's not an acronym I made up to fuck with vendors. Um, but if you use it to mean something else, like network detection application or something like that, right? And um, I'm that good at acronyms. I made that up on the spot. <laughs> so their worry was that the members would give like their licensing and their certifications and all this really personal data, and then an attacker would go in and steal the nine million people's data, okay? And, or however many million, but somewhere around nine is what we stole, but I think they had more than that, right? By the way, when I tell a story like, and we stole, just add the words with permission, I forget those words. Um, we only do this with permission. And so we start testing the app, and one of the first things you do is you register for an account, right? And this is actually, what I wanna be very clear, is you test your own apps. Uh, one of the things we see internal teams fuck up all the time is they don't test the registration or the sign-in functionality of the application. And the reason they don't is because they're an internal team, they're so used to like internal single sign on like everything's tied to AD or everything's got, right, whatever it is. And so what happens is they just have an account when they go and test it because it tied to AD and so they don't test the registration. They don't test the login stuff. Don't skip that, okay? Because in this case, what did I do? I went, I registered for an account, and it asked me a whole bunch of questions, and I had to upload a whole bunch of documents. And then I get to a page where it says, okay, please review your following, the following information to make sure it's good, because once you submit it, you know, this is gonna go to the government, and we can't fuck with it after that, right? So please make sure it's right. And it gives me this page that just scrolls forever, and it has all my personal data on it. And because I'm weird, I noticed that in the URL, it said member ID equals nine million and one, or something like that. And I thought, huh, there's no way, right? So I changed it to nine million, and I had somebody else's data. And I wanna be clear, this is something you've heard about for decades. Like the first time somebody changed an integer in a get request to get somebody else's data, I think was sometime around 1637. Nikolai Tesla did it or something, I don't know. And then Einstein, st uh, Edison stole it, but this was last year. <laughs> We're still finding this as of this year, 2024, that people do this. And we were able to iterate through nine million people's data and steal it. Not only were we able to steal this data, but we were able to also find that they had no detection or alerting on the registration. Because up until the time that you got to the point where you said, yep, it's good, I wanna be a member, they considered that unauthenticated and they didn't think it was important to monitor it, right? 
because that's an unauthenticated user. Ignore the fact that the user's given personal data. Ignore the fact that I was able to steal other people's personal data. Ignore the fact that it's your fucking app. Right? That's what we see. So you need to look at your apps and figure out, like, where is this data, right? How does this work? Another example of this is an application. This was a military contractor, and they hired us to come in, and there was very, very, very limited scope. It's one of those things where they were gonna put us in a conference room and see if we could break out of the conference room. And I don't mean like bust at the door and run in, that's the next slide. But could we get access to parts of the network that weren't guessed, right? So we sat down in the conference room and they had had a sign at the sign-in desk that had the wireless information and you know the password to get onto it and all this kind of stuff. And so we got onto it. It was a guest network, it was supposed to be. And uh, when we got to it, like you joined the SSID and it gave you a captive portal page, right? I love captive portals, I really do. Because almost every captive portal in an organization like that is tied to Active Directory. Why? Because employees put their phone on the guest network and they might as well log in because we've got to be helpful. They also, uh, by the way, very often that device, that Meraki or whatever, is tied to both the private network and the guest network and things like that, so it's got access. Right, so we hit this captive portal and it had a vulnerability that gave us command execution on the server. So we started executing commands, that got us onto the network, which got us talking to the domain controller, which got us dumping stuff out of AD, and that's when we stopped the test. And we called the customer, we were on site, but they weren't in the room with us, and we called them and we told them what was going on. And here was the problem, and this is why I say, like what you could do to test this yourself, right? This was a misunderstanding of risk, in my opinion, right? But I have the mic, so my opinion matters. That's how you know. <laughs> who has the microphone, right? But uh, the problem was, again, the customer thought about the guest network as completely segregated from the rest of the network. As a matter of fact, in this organization, a couple years before that, their guest network had been physically separate wireless hardware. And they put it out in the locations where guests were allowed and it was completely physically separated. They had a separate internet connection and everything else just for the guests. And then at some point, I'm assuming it was Cisco, but it could be Palo, you know, somebody went in and said, I can save you money. And they rolled out a new wireless network that was using the same hardware for the private network as the guest network. And that's not necessarily a bad idea, but then there was a vulnerability in the web interface, right? And because of that, you know, Com, you know, uh, whatever you do when you pull two things together and you combine them, combine whatever, uh, right? We consolidated, there's the word, and um, <sighs> it's a good thing speaking isn't part of my job. They consolidated this down, now we have a problem. But the people who were evaluating risk didn't understand that the network team had done that. Right? It just wasn't communicated correctly. Maybe they didn't listen, maybe it wasn't talked about, whatever it was, I wasn't there, right? But now they have a risk, they have an application that everybody knew about, right? This captive portal. And that's the problem, okay? How do you test that yourself? Look at your organization. Think about your organization and think about all the apps you have running, right? And I, when I say apps, I even mean the ones that Jill from accounting who read PHP in 21 seconds wrote and is now business critical, right? That Fox Pro database that became massive, <laughs> you know, right? Look at them. Then we'll talk about physical attacks. I love physical attacks. That sounded wrong. That's gonna get quoted in a trial. <laughs> Very few organizations test their physical security. Very few organizations even think about their physical security, right? The problem is, I don't give a shit how secure your network is if I can walk into the organization and steal laptops, right? If I can walk into your data center and walk out with servers, right? 
was it in Australia? This was years ago. Where an attacker walked to the side of a building, busted a hole in it and used a forklift to cart out mainframes, right? Is that on your risk matrix? <laughs> was it 89? So it was longer than I thought. Joe, you're also fucking old. <laughs> yes, better than the option, which is dead. <laughs> When you start looking at physical security, you gotta be really careful with scope. It's really easy. Here's the best thing to practice when you're about to do a physical test, right? This motion. <laughs> practice that before you go on site. But you gotta put, pay, pay attention to scope. You gotta think about what are we allowed to touch? What are we allowed to assess? But when you walk around, even if you're not doing actually like ninja moves, climbing buildings and breaking into windows, right? You know, think about the security of the building. Think about the controls, right? Would people stop somebody? And don't say, yes, of course they would. Because all I gotta do is carry a box. Oh, he's fat and lazy, we'll let him in. Crutches, crutches work. Yeah, I've never used crutches. Uh, totally, right? Here's where I'm gonna be, I've been told I'm sexist, but if you can have a woman walk up to a door, men will open it. Sorry, it's just fact. Right? Oh, 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 gotta, I'll get that for you. Right? And they'll open the door. Excuse me? I'm sorry? I get out of here with you toxic Exactly. But it's true, right? People will open the door. Okay, I've never been, I guess. I, you know, if I was there, I'd open the door. Right? <laughs> it doesn't work everywhere, but it works a lot of places, right? The other thing, carry a pizza box. Grab a stack of pizza boxes, walk in. Buy a FedEx uniform. They're on eBay, and the best part is every one I've ordered has been delivered by UPS. I giggle every time, right? You just walk in, right? We walked into this hospital, we walked around. This one, we didn't even dress up. We just, I mean, we dressed, right? We had pants on. We walked around this hospital, we just walked into offices. Why? Because hospitals are set up to help sick people. Right? And let's be blunt, you don't want to change that. You want them to help sick people. So you have to think about the other controls you can put in place. In this case, what we did was we wandered around, we got data off desks, and then we called the help desk, and we were able to reset passwords and get access to things based on the data on the desks. Right? We got into a data center of a bank. That's always fun. How do we do it? We pop the door open. Right? We don't pick locks. We use door entry tools that'll pop the door or whatever. You don't pick locks because it could break the lock, and our job is not to break them. And let's be blunt, we can open every single window in the world at least one time. We may not be able to close it when we're done, but it's open, right? And so you gotta look at this stuff and think about it. And so in this, in this hospital where we walked around, right, how do you do that? Well, it's simple. Walk around, right? You work there, so people aren't gonna challenge you the same way, because they probably recognize you, they probably see you around, things like that, but that's okay. Walk around and look to see what people are doing. Are people leaving their machines unlocked? Do people have really sensitive data floating around? Do they have passwords under their keyboard? Because Jesus, people, that still happens. The fact I can lift a keyboard and there's a post-it note with a password written on it is disgusting in 2024. But here's the reality. That's normal for a lot of people. Here's what I don't want you to do, and this is a pet peeve of mine. Serious. Because I know, I know there's people in this room that do it. Still do it today. You walk around your office, you see somebody's machine unlocked, and you change the fucking wallpaper to something stupid. Or you send an email out to the team that says, hey, I'm buying donuts tomorrow, right? Stop fucking doing that. All you're doing is pissing people off. Our job as InfoSec isn't just to piss people off, even though I know many of us get glee in it. Have for years. I'm an asshole, it's in court records. And not divorce court, where I assume that happens a lot. For years, I liked the fact that I was smarter than everybody else. I wasn't really, but I thought I was because I knew cool shit. You know that like 400,000 breaches a day are found because a user saw something weird and told us stuff. 
That's not true. Like 91% of breaches are detected by the user. Not your whiz bang fancy sock. Not that fucking tool you bought. Because a user said, man, that's weird. I wonder what it is. And they called the help desk. And the help desk went, fuck, that is weird. Let me call security. That's how we find the vast majority of breaches. So what you do by changing the background and pissing off the user is you take the best detection system you have and you piss on them. Stop it. Right? Go evaluate your stuff. Because let's be blunt, this is the last set of attacks I'm going to talk about and it's my favorite ones. Fuck the security team. Why? Because they think they're better than everybody else. Don't we? And notice I said we. We sit there with our tools. We bitch about those developers have admin rights on their workstation. Really, that sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, do you have admin rights on your workstation? Yeah, why? Well, I'm a security person, I know better. Do you? Do you really? Because let me tell you, we don't do phishing very often. And the reason we don't do phishing attacks very often is I believe they're a waste of money. For most organizations, phishing attacks are a waste of money because we know what will happen. I don't actually have to do the phishing attack. I can just write the report. They clicked. <laughs> but when we do phishing attacks, right, here's what we do. We work with the customer. We come up with a ruse. We draw up the ruse. We build the email. Then we send it to the customer and say, hey, is this OK? And the customer goes, oh, sounds pretty good. Well, yeah, fucking do that one. OK. And then we send it out to the targets. And when we send it out to the targets, we copy our contact so that they know the attack happened. Do you know something like 80% of the time, our contact clicks the email and then gives us their credentials? The first time this happened, I was, I was working for InGuardians, and I sent out this phishing attack. Oh, it was a beautiful phishing. It was really a good phishing attack. I was so proud of this phishing attack, right? And I sent it out, and I got the approval. Five minutes later, I sent it out to everybody else and copied my contact, and within 30 seconds of me sending it out, my contact clicked the link and gave me his credentials. And I'm an idiot, I ignored them. Why? Because I assumed he was testing the link. I don't know why he thought I hadn't tested the link, but that's what I thought he did, right? So we do, luckily, about five minutes later, somebody else clicked the link, gave us domain admin credentials, but that's okay. So on the debrief call that day, I'm having a conversation with the customer, and I just happen to mention in passing, hey dude, you didn't have to test that link. And he said, test what link? <laughs> Fuck. The minute he said that, I knew. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, is your password <laughs> winter 2024? And, um, <laughs> but with an exclamation mark <laughs> and a capital W. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we fuck with you because it's summer. But... <laughs> We do a rot two on all of our seasons when we set our passwords, right? <laughs> Fuck it, I don't know. It sounded good, right? And the dude's like, how did you know my password? I'm like, you fucking gave it to me. And that happens all the time. The number of times that we compromise organizations by taking one of our SIAMs, which is a secure ideas attack machine, right? Or a NUC running Cali. But, <laughs> look, man, we got to have cool acronyms, right? SIAMs. We plug this machine in. Do you know how often within 15 minutes Nessus scans that machine with domain admin credentials? I'm a domain admin. How'd you get it? You gave it to me. How'd I give it to you? Did you configure Nessus? Yes. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Best part is, Nessus doesn't need domain admin credentials to scan a network. You're like, oh no, Kevin, I like it logging into my workstations and doing patch management and seeing what's there. Right, Windows Active Directory has a role you can give a user where it can pull the installed patch level. And I'm gonna tell you now, I don't fucking remember what it's called. <laughs> I did, right up until I got to this slide. <laughs> Damn it. And I don't put notes in my slides, because that'd be helpful. <laughs> and, um, I'm better than that. <laughs> Shit, I don't remember what it's called. But it's a role, it's not an administrator. 
right? If I compromise that account by you scanning me, all I can do is pull a list of software. And yes, I will acknowledge that's more information I had than before I had those credentials, but I'm not a domain admin gleefully giggling through your network. And I giggle a lot in my tests. Here's how they work. I start testing, and then I, 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 I find something, and people have told me that I out loud say, huh. And then about a few minutes later, I giggle. That means I got to what I needed to get to. Whatever that is, right? So what you need to do is, as a security team, evaluate what you are doing, what you are using, and how you are using it. And get off your fucking high horse thinking you're better than everybody else. Because I social engineered you all to come into this room. Some of you are like, fuck it, I did fall for it. <laughs> right? This is what we do. And, and look, don't get me wrong, we have to be confident. Because if you walk into a board meeting and go, well, you know, I think we might get hacked, but we might be able to do this, they're just gonna laugh you out of the fucking room. But if you take confidence and turn it into ego, which is what most people end up doing, how many times have you looked at something and said, I fucking told you not to do that, right? I know I've said it. Why the fuck would you do that? You stupid. I hear that a lot. Stupid users. We're fucking users. And we're just as dumb. I fell for a social engineering attack last year in October. I did. I ran for the board for OWASP. October 31st, voting ended. They told us if we won. When they told us if we won, they said to us, please do not tell anybody until the closing ceremony at the event tomorrow, because if you won, they came back and said, do you still want it, right? And what they didn't want to have happen was for me to tell people, here are the four people that won, and have one of those people have rejected the election for various reasons, right? Because that would make the person who replaced them look bad. Well, you didn't win, except the other person quit, so ha, 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 you're, right, you know what I mean? So they told us not to tell anybody. And personally, I stick to that when people say, don't tell people. It's part of my job. So the next morning, I get a text message from Alyssa Miller. And it just said, congrats. And I texted back, who told you? And she texted back, you did, right now. <laughs> because she had been asking her, like, who, did Kevin win? Did, uh, and everyone was like, oh, can't tell you, I'll be at the closing ceremony. So she fucking texted me. And I fell for it. And I don't mean to be rude, but I'm kind of security aware. And I'd like to blame it that, oh, I hadn't had my coffee yet. That's bullshit, it was like 11 a.m. I had been up for six hours. And it had plenty of fucking coffee. We as security people have to remember that we are also the users and we need to evaluate ourselves, right? And here's the best part about that. This is something I learned way back, long fucking time ago, right? My dad beat it into me or some bullshit, right? What I learned was every single time I tried to figure out what broke, I looked at the things I did first partly because I'm fucking stupid, and partly because I can fix me easier than I can fix you. If I look at my own behavior, if I look at the things I'm doing, and I make them better, one, right off the bat, we've moved the fucking needle. Now, it probably looks bad to go to the board and say, well, we fixed 80% of our security vulnerabilities. What'd you do? I fired the security team. But we patched our shit. Now do the rest of the organization, <laughs> right? Probably don't present it that way. But look at our own stuff first because we can move the needle by fixing our own behavior and not only do we fix our own behavior, but we then become the actual example we want to be. Because that's what we should be doing. This goes back to the beginning. Being the navigator, being the guide. We should be the light that everybody is following. And look around at us. Most of us aren't. Most of us aren't. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed to say that many times I've not been that person. 
I've been the dickhead in the meeting going, what the fuck is wrong with you people? We should be better. Because if we're not better, we're not going to fix it. And let's be blunt. If we don't fix it, and I'm not even sure what fix it means exactly, because I don't believe it's possible for us to make everything secure. I think it is possible for us to raise the bar and be better so that we don't have to hear about another hospital that is turning away ER patients because their fucking systems have been compromised. We don't have to hear about another elderly couple that has lost their life savings because some fucking person clicked a link and gave access to their email to them. Our job is actually important. Let's pay attention to it and be better, right? I'll start with me, you start with you, okay? And I got the STFU sign, so I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.